All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about something that I find endlessly intriguing and honestly kind of a trap when it comes to the venerable EDC knife. And that has to be, without a doubt, the uprise of knife modding, customizing, and overall personalizing when it comes to blades, especially budget blades. But I wanted to talk about this because it kind of dawned on me not too long ago um, that I hadn't really been like thinking about modding blades uh, or I kind of always passively do right but I never really thought about you know like when I was coming up in the knife world it wasn't really as big of a thing um, previously to modify your knives. Oftentimes it was, you know, oh, you should buy the knife that you think will work best for you, or, you know, invariably there might be a blade that would work better in some situations, circumstances, or, you know, just overall environments. And so you would buy that blade. Something like this Plain Jane Spyderco Para 3 was not uncommon, but before too long, I think there were a lot of people that came into the knife industry that wanted, you know, they, they liked designs or they liked certain, you know, features or they wanted their own take on it. And whether that's custom blade steels or custom handle variations, you know, it would end up being the same type of knife, like say this Benchmade 535 bug out. It would still be a bug out like this guy, but you know, it would feature either different steel, different handle materials, but it would still be the same principal core knife. And I want to talk about this because I realized that, you know, I never really got much into, um, you know, really modifying my knives and I've never really been a big fan. And I kind of maybe it dawned on me because when I got my Hope Deca, a lot of people asked me like, oh, are you going to change out the handles? You know, are you going to, you know, get like say aluminum handles or G10 handles? And I never really thought about it and nor was I really wanting to because it's like, this is the way that the knife came and this is the way it was designed. And honestly, while I don't love this knife for a lot of reasons, like don't get me wrong, it is a good knife at the core, but you know, it's not necessarily my preferred blade, especially because it's super thin, super, super narrow and very, very lightweight. I usually like something that's a little bit thicker, a little bit more um, robust, you know, something more along the lines of this Benchmade, <laughs> Benchmade, the Zero Tolerance, Zero 562. You know, it has just a little bit thicker handle a little bit more substantial knife as a whole i also tend to be a pretty big fan of like three and a half inch blade lengths so you know for me the hoke deca has a purpose in my edc but it wasn't really something that i was going to modify into being more like this because of this uh, the 0562 is its own blade it's its own knife and you know if i want this i'll just carry this right or if i want the uh, hoke deca i'll just carry the hoke deca so that kind of got me thinking about uh you know modifying knives and how it kind of is a little bit of a trap and i know i've talked about this before especially with nafsco and their lander where the lander is at the core a 50 60 dollar knife but the whole idea or premise to the lander is that you're supposed to buy it and then buy different handle variations buy different customizations and so before you know it you have this you know what is at the core a 50 dollar knife that you've now put a hundred or hundred fifty dollars into buying either limited edition or special or unique customizations and at the core it's like is it really worth taking a fifty dollar knife and making it um, your own at the cost of making it now a one hundred dollar knife and i'm holding this knife the crkt large pilar for a specific reason and this is one that i actually got in trade i don't think i would have bought it necessarily on my own but I do like it don't get me wrong it is a cool knife and I do enjoy having it in my collection but this is one that is a really good case in point because the large pilar is at the core like a $40 knife but this one has the custom flytanium carbon fiber scale on it so the show side is carbon fiber and then its backspacer has been changed to carbon fiber and like I said this at its core is like a $40 to $60 knife and these handles alone are $60 so we're meaning to say that someone at some point spent, you know, $60 on this knife and then another $60 on this handle, you know, slash backspacer to bring it up to a $100 knife. And the reason why I think that this is especially kind of a trap is because at the core, and once again, kind of how I got it in trade, is that this is still ultimately
probably like a 60 70 dollar knife and so the problem when it comes down to customizing a knife or going with you know um, varietals that make the blade more special especially when it comes to things like handles is you're not really changing the knife but you are adding a lot more cost on your end and in the end of that you're not really changing the resale value now at the core you know maybe you don't buy the knife with the idea or the premise that you're going to you know sell it again so maybe that's not as applicable to you in your circumstance but at the same time too it is really worth noting like like companies like Flytanium are seeking to make money off of you hoping that you will take a cheaper knife and make it more expensive and at the core that doesn't really change the actual worth of that knife it just makes that knife more expensive for the end user right and at the same time too especially with something like this pilar you know the blade steel itself is still um, 8cr 13 mov right so the end cutting performance of this blade is still going to be pretty low so even though you have this really nice really super good looking and lightweight you know carbon fiber on here you're still left with the same marginal blade performance that the 8 CR13 MOV offers. So you do have to be cautious with, with things like this. And like I said, I really say this because things like the NAFS Lander is in a similar way. I believe it's like 14C28N, which is not a bad steal in the slightest, but at the same time too, when you end up spending a hundred dollars, you know, in when you are a hundred dollars or more deep in a knife that still only offers that type of performance, it begins to get more and more questionable. And it really goes to sort of like how much personalization really should you aim for. And that's why I think for me, like don't get me wrong, I have a few limited edition knives, like of course the Benchmade bug out that I've been showing, and of course my paramilitary two that you know are limited editions themselves but I don't really have or I don't really focus on modding or personalizing my knives that's why something like this uh, para 3 here that honestly I could get scales aftermarket scales for this guy anytime I wanted to right I could you know get different blades I could even you know hunt around or rummage around on the Spyderco second sales and try to get you know like a different uh, blade steel for this and you know of course different clips and stuff like that but honestly the reason why I've never really chosen to do that is because one I, I try to buy knives that fit my use goals and my like end purposes pretty well and then I also tend to aim for things that like I end up liking the blade as a whole like so like I aim for the knife that I truly want to get and then I don't really think I should add much more money like if a knife is truly worth its weight it'll be just fine the way it is and I never really wanted to subscribe to the idea of you know trying to make a knife my own because ultimately I think that's kind of how you end up getting baited into people like Flytanium where don't get me wrong Flytanium does a fantastic job their products are very high quality like this you know handle here is really well done like it's definitely better than factory and so it's a very high quality piece but at the same time too it's like what are you really you know paying for at the core you know like to, to look different to look unique you're having to spend a lot of money to do that so for me it's never really sat well and that's why i've never really personally been one to aim towards um these kind of aftermarket modifications to try to make my blades look unique um, and different but anyways guys hopefully you enjoyed this video hopefully maybe you agree with the rant maybe you don't um, i know that there are a lot of people that like to personalize and customize their knives and of course one thing i do like to do with a good amount of my knives is of course you know re-grind them or you know change the angle of the bevel but I don't really think that's much of a customization. I tend to, outside of that, leave my blades pretty, pretty darn bone stock. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.